Hey, how you doing? Chef Big D here from season 19 of Hell's Kitchen. You all know me by now. You've been watching me on Instagram and following everything I've been doing. I'm so grateful for that. Today, I'm here now in my apartment and I'm gonna be doing one of the dishes uh, that I'm gonna be making at Jack's Ranch. And that's uh, my version of uh, Italian lasagna. Uh, I'm gonna bring it up a notch by adding in some different ingredients, but it's still on the lines of a, uh, an Italian lasagna. And uh, today we're gonna start off, we have some 80% um, 80% uh, 80 20 beef. Um, I've got pre-blanched uh, lasagna pasta. I have a blend of mozzarella, uh, cheddar, and parmesan. I've got some lovely ricotta, uh, Kerrygold butter, and plain flour for making the uh, roux. I've got a little bit of balimaloo relish that I like to add to um, casseroles and stews because it gives it a little bit of bite. Um, I'm going to be using some smoked bacon. I have chopped celery, chopped uh, carrots, chopped onion, which is the holy trinity. And then I've got some lovely San Marzano DOP tomatoes that I've just crushed with my hands. Uh, regular garlic, tomato paste, and then some mild uh, Italian sausage, which I'm gonna add into it as well. So what we do is uh, we preheat the oven to about uh, 375, 400, and get that up to temperature. Make sure you have your equipment that you need, i.e. the dish that you're gonna make the lasagna in. I'm making a large one today, so I'm gonna be filling this dish. I need my pots and pans. Uh, I've got my other utensils on the side there that I'm going to use. And then also in the back, just a little bit of prep beforehand, I have some infused milk that has some nutmeg, bay leaf, onion and clove. And that's one of the bases for making a traditional bechamel. With that though, I'm going to finish it with some white cheese like Parmesan and uh, Fontina and a little bit of provolone. Just make it nice and rich, season it up with salt and pepper and off we go. So first off, we're going to dice some onions and we're gonna chop some garlic. So starting off with a regular onion. Man, these knives. And then you want a small dice because the onion is gonna disappear as it cooks. You've got a small piece on to hold the root. And then you run your knife through it like so. Uh, about half a centimeter all the way through. Put your knife through here and that breaks it down even smaller for you. And then just dice away. And with that, uh, the onions are gonna saute off. Uh, the meat is gonna saute off the bacon. But the first thing that's gonna go into the pot is some lovely EVO, extra virgin olive oil, and the bacon. Right, next, you take the garlic, and a little trick I learned is, if you use the back of the knife, you can crush the garlic really quick. So you take the back of the knife, flip the knife upside down, make sure you don't cut yourself, but you then run the knife through the garlic like so. It's crushed already. And then you just run your knife through it, break it down even more, and that's it. Now, the next step will be, that we're gonna put olive oil in the hot pan and we're gonna start to saute the bacon. Right, so what we do next is we bring a decent sized pot up to a nice hot heat. I'm on seven here, this is electric. And we add a nice dollop, extra virgin olive oil. Yep, and then uh, to that, I'm gonna add my bacon. And then while these are sauteing, and we're gonna get these broken down and sweated down beautifully. The next part that I'm gonna make is uh, the bechamel. So we start off with a pot again, low heat. We just wanna melt some butter without any color. I'll take a little whisk. And then I'll take my favorite butter in the world, which is Kerrygold. It's an Irish butter here in America. One of the best butters in the world. I can't, I can't speak enough about it because I use it in all my cooking. And with this, we're gonna make a roux. Equal quantities. I'm gonna say about uh, 250 grams. No, less, about 100 grams of butter. Into the fridge. Let that melt down. You don't want any color, you want it on a low heat. 
And uh, in the meantime, what I have done is, as I said, I infused the milk already with uh, nutmeg, onion, um, bay leaf and cloves, seasoning with salt and pepper. So as the butter is melting, you don't want it to color in any way, you just want lovely melty butter. Give them a stir. And all you're doing is, you're just building layers of flavor by adding the bacon. Now, butter's almost melted. To that, I'm gonna make a roux. And that's just a thickening agent, a classic thickening agent for a bechamel. And for other sauces in general, but for a roux, and for this one, very classic. You'll see it come together. You don't want any color because that will change the effect of the sauce. And as you see, I'm cooking it out. And I've made a lovely little roux, just like that. See? Yep. Turn down the heat a little bit. Then to the bacon. To the bacon, I'm gonna add the onions and the garlic. Oh, so. Whoa. Again, you don't want any color on the onions. You just want them translucent, lovely and soft. And again, you're just building layers. Now for the bechamel, um, I take a strainer. Put it over the pot, take my infused milk, and bit by bit, I add it so I can remove all the lumps and cook it out so it's lovely and smooth and velvety. And with making a bechamel, I don't want my bechamel to be super thick. I want it to be velvety and a little bit thicker than pouring cream is what you're looking for, but you have to make sure that you cook it out properly. Otherwise, you'll have this flowery, gritty flavor, or taste, or texture, I should say. As you can see, it's starting to come together there, thickening up, I'm making a bechamel here. This will be the last bit. And that's what I had inside it for infusing it, is the onion, the bay leaf, the clove, and then just a little uh, grate of uh, fresh nutmeg. Now, the bechamel, um, I've added all the liquids to it, the flour has been cooked out. The roux has been cooked out, I should say. Um, I just want to make sure there's no lumps. And you'll see it now, it's, it's like milk now, but as it thickens and cooks out, it will thicken up beautifully. So the onions, the bacon, and the garlic are cooking out. They're starting to get translucent, which is what you're looking for. Now I'm gonna add the Italian sausage. And we'll get that to start cooking out as well. And um, this is just Commoner Garden, Walmart's finest, um, mild Italian sausage. I love it. I always add it to it. You can buy the spicy one as well, it's great. So with the sausage, I'm cooking that out as well. And then we're gonna add in the uh, actual beef, ground beef itself. Bechamel's coming along beautifully. Take the pepper mill. These are by Weber Design, probably the best pepper mill and salt mill I've ever used in my whole career. Check them out on Instagram. Uh, they measure the salt whatever way you want to the micron, practically. As the uh, roux is starting to take the infused milk, it will start to thicken it and be a little bit thicker than pouring cream. And then what we're doing is, as we build the layers in the uh, ragu, if you say, or the uh, it's a type of bolognese maybe, or the lasagna mix, we're building flavors, we're adding layers of uh, different flavors from the meat, from the pork, from the onion, from the garlic, so again, with the ground beef, I like to add it bit by bit, and I try to break it up as much as I can. 
and we want to brown the meat as well with everything in here. Bechamel is just done. I can take that off the heat now. Right, we just leave that to the side. Now, back to this. As you can see, the other meats have started to colour and uh, I'm adding in the beef now and we're going to cook out the beef and break it down as well. So as I was saying, um, you can use a spoon to break it up. Uh, what I'm going to do is though, I'm going to move from the spoon and I'm going to use on uh, to a potato masher. As it cooks out, I can keep mashing it to break it down, which is brilliant. Just come to garden potato masher. As we change down to the potato masher, I find that it, it breaks it down better. But as you can see inside the pot, there's some extra grease off the bacon, the Italian sausage meat, and off the beef. I don't like that in it. Um, there is flavor there, but I'm gonna skim that off. And you can see from the potato masher that all the meat is broken down. And again, as I said, as we add each piece to it, all we're doing is building layers and layers and layers of flavor. And uh, I have a little joke with my girlfriend where um, fat is in, all the flavors in the fat as she pokes my love handles, which I'm working on. Right, so I've removed the excess grease and fat. Then what I'm gonna do to add a bit, a bit of a kick to the meat, only a small pinch of chili. I like to add that because uh, gives it a bit of a kick and again you're just building layers of flavor. Uh, we're going to add the carrots and the celery and then I like dry oregano. You can use fresh if you want but uh, I'm just going to go with dried. To this amount of beef which is about what four pounds I'm going to add about two tablespoons of dried oregano. I added about two teaspoons of chili and then as I said uh, ketchup. Irish ketchup, I'm gonna add some of that, which is Ballymaloo relish. It's got a really good, savory, sweet flavor. Now to the beef, I'm gonna add the tomato paste and cook it out. To that, we're back to the wooden spoon. As you can see, like that. Scrape down the edges of your pot so you don't waste anything. The next stage of this will be adding the Samarzano tomatoes. Uh, we'll be seasoning it up with salt and pepper for the final stage and I'll give it a little lick of olive oil if it needs it. I like to add olive oil to it. Now while that tomato paste is cooking out we'll go back to the bechamel and we'll make the bechamel cheesy. I already seasoned it with salt and pepper. I've tasted it, it's delicious. Now we add in that. So that's a mix of a uh, little bit of cheddar, some Parmesan, some Fontina, and some provolone. And the temperature inside there already is gonna melt the cheese, so you're good. There you go, look how cheesy that is. Yeah, delicious. And I, I feel it's important uh, to make a good bechamel when you're doing a lasagna, it all helps. So, tomato paste is now cooked out. Carrots and onions are sweating down. Our carrots and celery are sweating down there. So the next stage and, uh, is the San Marzano tomatoes. I just crush them by hand. If there's any bigger pieces in there, don't worry, they're gonna cook out. It's gonna taste great. And then what we'll do is we'll let this simmer. And what I try to do is I try to let all the flavors blend, but I try to let it simmer on a low heat, medium heat for at least 40 minutes so that the meat gets a good chance to break down before we build the lasagna and bake it. So we'll just let it come up to the boil and then we'll reduce the heat and let it simmer for 40 minutes. As it's come up to the boil, just turn that down a little bit and just let it simmer. Let it sit there, you can put a lid on it, just make sure it's not too hot. You can wrap it with aluminum foil or tin foil, I call it back in Ireland. Um, then when that's simmered, 
Then we'll check it for seasoning and we'll season it with salt and pepper. And then we're good to go to build the lasagna, okay? So we've had the uh, bolognese slash lasagna mix on. Uh, it's simmered for about 45 minutes. Uh, as you can see, it's changed. Uh, the tomato oils and everything have incorporated into it. So it looks like a ragu. But now I'm gonna season it before we start building the lasagna. In the meantime, I have the oven preheated to 420. We're gonna put it in there and maybe turn it down to adjust it. But uh, let's start. So the bechamel is done, that's seasoned, that's perfect. But next I wanna season this and taste it. I use Malden salt in my meal. You can use a rock salt, but I try and find a salt that's as close to natural as possible. Then what we do is we take a spoon, obviously. Oh man, that's awesome. And then the same with the bechamel. Just before I build, I want to double check. All right, that can use with a pinch of salt and a little pepper. As a chef, I'm never happy until it's just right. So mix that up. Now, I pre-blanched the lasagna pasta. I have my cheese mix for the top and I have some special ricotta. As I build the layers, I'm gonna build ricotta into it as well. But what we start off with is a little layer of bechamel on the bottom. Spread that around. Just like so. What I like to do is, I like to put a bit of the meat in as well, just a small bit. Then we take the lasagna pasta, which I pre-blanched, and we just layer it. Like so, the heat will find its, make the pasta find its own shape. But if it's curled, just flip it the other way around. And then you just build the lasagna. Put a few little dollops of bechamel through this as well. I'm excited to taste this. And I know my awesome camera crew are excited to taste this as well. Back to the lasagna sheets. I'm gonna take the ricotta. We're gonna build little dollops, like so. Uh, the ricotta trick is from my girlfriend's mother. Uh, that's what she does. She makes hers on meatballs, which I love when she makes lasagna as well. But uh, yeah, adding the ricotta to it is great. This would be like your midway layer, practically. You don't have to be too precise. And then more meat mix. So if everybody's gonna be commenting going, oh my God, you've got so much lasagna already. You don't know what I have got on in the background. So uh, I actually have another batch of this, like one I made earlier, uh, that I have to make a few lasagnas. So that's why I've got so much cooked off. Right, so last bit, more bechamel. And I can hear people out there going, chef, 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 you're gonna need a bigger boat. And I'm like, don't worry about it. For the last one, we're gonna be like a, a pastry chef now. That extra bit of bechamel. You got all your friends over, you make one of these lasagnas, you have a load of beers. I don't care if it's the summer, whatever. This with a beautiful salad. Man, you'll be making friends for sure. The cheese mix, as I said, a bit of mozzarella, parmesan, cheddar and fontina, and a little bit of provolone. The more cheese, the better, I say. But you could also, you can make the bechamel on low fat milk. You could use cornstarch instead of butter and uh, 
uh, flour, which would make it healthier or just less calories. And then uh, you could get all the low fat cheeses. But where's the fun in that, right? And then there's a lovely bit of meat sauce here. Just drizzle that. I've seasoned all the components, but for good luck. So now is the moment where we put it in and we let it do its thing. Oh, that's heavy. Look at that. And then time it because it's already hot going in. I would give it a good 20 to 30 minutes, double check it in about 15 minutes, reduce the temperature if it's starting to brown too much, but it's good to go. And wait till we see this when we pull this out, it's gonna be bubbly heaven. Check it out. Right, so my favorite dish to cook at the moment would be a lot of Italian dishes because I'm opening an Italian restaurant. But right now my favorite dish to cook is, hold on a second, just let me show you. Favorite one would be my own lasagna. Check that bad boy out. So we let it cook for 45 minutes. We've let it rest for about 15. And now comes the moment of truth and uh, the pièce de résistance. We're gonna cut this, portion it. We're gonna dress it beautifully on our plates that we've got handmade in Greece for Jack's Ranch. Wait to see these and the food they're gonna create on top of it. But uh, here we go. So I got a little serrated knife. And then just plating it. I've got a lovely little bit of cheese cream sauce. You don't have to do this, but I'm just doing it for the visual effect. Then I've got a little bit of meat sauce. Like so. And then last but not least, some granite padano. Check this out. Lasagna a la Chef Dagger. Beautiful, right? So there you go. That's one of my versions of lasagna that I'm gonna be doing at Jack's Ranch. Uh, I'll be posting the recipe really soon. Um, if you make it, don't be afraid to reach out to tell me what you think about it. Um, anybody out there who does make it, I hope you enjoy it. And then also, you gotta to come to Jack's Ranch to try all the different versions that I'm gonna make. Uh, some of them are gonna be braised meats uh, through the smoker and everything. They're gonna be wild. Some of them are gonna be little uh, raviolis of lasagna rather than lasagna that way. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be interesting, it's gonna be real cool. Anybody that makes this, make sure to reach out to me once you get the recipe and tell me what you think. Everybody, enjoy.